We are. This is, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity, usually Skate America is, for, uh, uh, for skaters to show debut new programs, for them to set the tone for the season, um, and also really show stuff that they've been working on all summer. Like if you're working on adding a quad to a program or you're working on a new triple-triple combinations, this is the chance for you to show the judges and to show your competitors what you've been working on and what they can expect to have to beat this season. Okay, so it's a, a big weekend, obviously, Shanae, for the skaters. What are you most looking forward to for the fans to watch out there, too? Oh, I think for me and for the fans as well, it's always interesting to see the new uh, programs that people have put together, the new, what music are they skating to, what was their inspiration for the season, the new choreography, I mean, what changes have they made? So I think it's always really cool for the fans to see that, and I know that it's always really an exciting thing for me to hear what music they're skating to, what's the theme this year for all the skaters, so. We're gonna see that, obviously, the first thing that we have to do is look at the pairs, which we're very excited for. That's coming up first here this afternoon in Las Vegas, the pairs, and this is the starting order, two different groups, Brooke Castile, you can see the American teams are split between those two groups, and really the three favorites, Brooke, actually, they're skating last. You've got Pavlyuchenko and Kodakin from Russia, Kane Gribble and Leduc from the U.S., and uh, Pang and Jin from China. What are we looking out for from these eight teams in the short program? Well, it's the short program, so the same old story still holds. Don't make any big mistakes. It's all about the jumps and the throws for the pairs for the most part, but there are also some other things to look for. Every year out of the seven elements, two of them actually change, and there's a different requirement every single year. The lift is one of them, and also the death spiral, and this year the death spiral is back inside, which is actually quite difficult for a lot of teams. They struggle with it, and I think that's something that we can look for outside of the jumps and the throws, which are a little bit easier to see, um, to kind of, you know, maybe either gain points and hopefully not lose any if all of the other big ticket items go really well. What is your mind, uh, no matter the skater, a pair skater, a single skater, a dancer, what in the short program are you trying to do and maybe more importantly, what are you trying not to do? Well, you know, they, they, the old proverb is, you know, you can always lose it in the short program, but you can't necessarily win it. And that still pretty much holds true. It's a little bit better when you're accumulating points now. You can make up that gap after the short program, but you don't want to dig yourself a hole. You know, you don't want to be coming from behind. Um, so the short program, for it's different for each skater, too. I mean, for somebody like Nathan Chen, who's a seasoned veteran, he's defending his title, He's, you know, he's the, the overwhelming favorite in here. He just wants to go skate clean. You know, he doesn't necessarily have to blow the doors off with high energy. And this isn't the World Championships. This is Skate America. And he is a master at building as the season goes. And so this is the start for him, and he wants to skate well. So that's that's got to be the short program mindset, at least from a singles aspect. Yeah, and I think it's interesting, actually, for pair, the difference between pairs and singles is that in the after the short program, the warm-up groups, there's only four teams in a warm-up. Whereas for singles, you have six. Being in that last group going into the free skate is so important because generally you stay in that last group. Mm. You don't really jump around in pairs and, and dance especially as well. And so as a, as a skater, a pair skater in the short, you really, you really, one of the goals is let's make minor mistakes, get through the short. Obviously, you want to skate clean. Early in the season, though, let's make minor mistakes and stay in that last group so that in our free skate we can make up points on all of these lifts, on an extra jump element, on you know so many more elements in the long program that you can make up points on. So I think that's um, it's a little bit more difficult with pairs. There's not as much cushion. Is there one team among this field that you feel like stands out when you look at sort of the components piece, the artistic side of, of pair skating? Um, I mean, for me, I love Ashley and Tim. I, I love both their programs last season. Um, and they've kind of broke the mold a little bit for pair teams as well with the height, too. I mean, Ashley's a tall girl. Never used to be that pair skaters, girl pair skaters would be tall. And it gives them this um, beautiful look. They've got lovely lines. And they obviously work a lot on their interpretation of their programs. Um, and they can look pretty clean even early on in the season. I remember that from Skate America last year, too. Um, and they always have a theme and a style that they bring into it. So I'm looking forward to seeing them produce some awesome programs this year like they did last year. Okay, so you mentioned them. We actually have an interview with them. We'll get to it in just a second. But you think they've got that theme and the style, but you think that this uh, backward death spiral might be difficult for them. Why is that? Well, I think it's when, when you tend to be a little bit taller, death spirals in general a little bit harder, and when you're forced to do one that maybe doesn't suit you as well, like the back inside, it tends to, you need the, that length is harder to, to create force and pull with. You want 
the distance between the male skater and the female skater to be as long as possible. That creates force, it creates a bigger circle. And a lot of the teams you'll see who struggle with it, you'll see closeness between the lady's head and the male's foot. And you don't want that, you want it to be further away. And um, I think it's a little bit difficult for the taller, taller girls just to do dust spirals. Yeah. It's, it's harder. Think, That's why you don't typically see a, f a five foot six right. woman like doing Ashley pairs. Is. And she's phenomenal. She's right. c completely broke the mold as far as that goes in so many different ways. She's more than just a good single skater who's doing pairs. She's a great pair skater. I often think of that that concept that you were saying with that back inside step death spiral. It's like like you know when you're in a public session you play crack the whip or whatever you know and you swing somebody and the more momentum the more length you have but the more momentum they have going flying out the outside. I think of that same thing if you can create that distance and that that length you can really crack the whip and create more momentum with that. Of course, I haven't done a death spiral. You would know better than I, but that's kind of what it would seem like to me. And if you say the guys in here like this, it's hard to create that momentum as opposed to. It's out actually there. very difficult to get a a level four on death spirals. It's one of the hardest elements to get a high level on. Death spiral and the twist as well. It's very difficult. And one of the things about the um, the death spiral that's hard is you have to get around a certain amount of times to keep adding to that level. And that's the hardest thing about a death spiral. So if it's not your best one and you're required to do it in the short program, that's definitely a disadvantage. Okay, so that's something we're gonna break down after the pair <laughs> short program. Let's go ahead and check in with that team we were just talking about. They're the reigning US champs. They were bronze medalists here at Skate America last year. Ashley Kane Gribble, she just got married this spring, and Timothy LaDuke. We are checking in in Dallas, Texas with Ashley Kane Gribble, Timothy LaDuke, and Milo! Milo. <laughs> <laughs> He's terrified. <laughs> and if you notice, it is currently storming all around us, but I think it's quite it's perfect. perfect. It's perfect for us, yeah. because in our short program, she's a bird and I'm a storm, and so uh, a storm I, is brought, coming. I brought the storm. Mm -hmm. Just trying to stay in character. Yeah, and also in the, the middle of our free skate program, there's a crack of thunder yeah. as well, so perfect. This is very much on brand for us. Yeah. We, we plan this. <laughs> Some would say kismet. Well, with that, tell us what you guys are looking forward to most about this upcoming season. Uh, so we're really excited to be entering the season as the reigning national champions, but that's not changed anything about our mindset. We're still looking to improve and take steps forward as a team and to totally top what we did last year. So um, we're kind of entering with like a clean slate and looking to uh, be national champions again and to be top five at the world. Bold this year? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, to be national champions again, be top five at world championships and to medal at both of our Grand Prix. We'd love to make the Grand Prix final. Um, and, I mean, yeah, honestly, you should just keep improving as a team. This is our fourth season together, um, and we feel comfortable with our elements, but we want to push forward in our artistry. I think a big goal, too, is for us to look stunning at all times <laughs> as I step into the light. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> all right, well, we can't wait to see what you have for the upcoming season. The audio maybe yeah. wasn't perfect, but that went along with the stormy theme to their short program that we're going to see this afternoon and you can watch that interview on the fan zone us figure skating fan zone.com there's so much good social media content and just for them in general we talked a little bit about this yesterday brooke but do you guys feel and i know that i'm not sure exactly how you feel on this but do they have more pressure this season you feel like maybe they don't necessarily or that they're really well equipped to take on that pressure i think they're well equipped to take it on i think that they were prepared for it last year and they're just as prepared for it this year i think that one of the best things about this team is that and they were just on the cover of skating magazine and they yeah, talked about they this i think here it is oh, there it is there there, it is, they said two pillars of strength and i think that's the perfect way to describe them i think they are very well matched up and i yeah. think that that goes a long way. When, it, when you have to have a partnership, it's very difficult. You have to be together every day. And it's not just about getting along, it's about training the same way, having the same goals, trying to get to those goals in the same mindset. And I think that they're very similar, and I think that's a huge key to their success. Pressure, I mean, is it different this season? Um, you know, I kind of, I do agree with Brooke. I think that this season is almost like they believe now that they deserve to be in that top group of pair teams. 
Um, whereas previously, it's like coming in, it's like, oh, you know, like they knew they were good, but you know, they, were, they weren't quite confident enough. They didn't know, they didn't believe in themselves enough. I feel like their confidence has grown so much. And now it's like, they're very much one of the top pair teams to watch. Um, and they're different. I think they've got a different look and they stand out compared to a lot of teams. Um, so I know that the, a lot of the fans love watching them, um, not just here in the US, but throughout the world, because they have that different look. And they bring something new to the table as well. It's not just about the elements, which they also do do very well. They're very clean, but it's also about the components as well. They put a lot into their presentation, a lot into their package of the, the packaging of their programs. And um, yeah, it really puts them forward as one of the strong teams to watch for the next couple of years leading into Olympics. It, okay, so so you want to add something yeah, there? Because it, yeah, because I just wanted to add too, it, it is difficult to defend a title because, you know, when you're chasing, it's a whole different type of pressure. When you're being chased, it's different. And now that they are the national champions, there's a lot more distractions that they didn't necessarily have, a lot more expectations that, that people have on them. Like you're the best U.S. pair team. Now you were ninth at the world championships. Let's see if you can get in the top five. And those type of pressures, you know, can start to build and like you said distractions you're doing more interviews there's all sorts of these things so it can be distracting but if you channel it and do well you can use that as motivation and realize that you know Haven Denny and Brandon Frazier are right behind me and that may you know force me to work harder and be more prepared and, and skate well too so and they, they seem to have very good focus and they focus on the right things and they they stay there they set a really good plan they stick to it they compete a lot they put themselves in so many different situations. Yes, internationally they compete a lot, and I feel like they have Nina Moser on their team, the top Russian pair coach, which is very smart. It helps them not only technically but also politically. Being judged when you have this coach by your side, you're going to be talked about. You're going to be well known, and they've just they've played everything right. I'm curious to see how they they continue that this season because every year they just add a little bit, and it's like a nice slow steady climb and this instead season, of just like bursting in. Right. This season, they, she even added a name. I mean, she, she added another name. It may wanted to make it more enough. difficult for us. We talked about everybody <laughs> adding elements in the off season. She Some added, a name. I added a name. So. <laughs> Congratulations to <laughs> Ashley Kane Gribble on that marriage this spring. Um, you also, you mentioned Mike. You've got uh, Denny and Frazier. You also have Jessica Callaleng and uh, Brian Johnson. They're here for the first time at a Grand Prix. I think excited to see them. They train alongside the Canerums with uh, Jenny Sand and Todd Menno, um, or Todd Menno and Jenny yeah. Sand. No, Which no, no. is it? Come on, Jenny, help me out. Jenny Mino and Todd Sands. Sands. Todd Sands. There we go. They're in L.A., so they're training with them. Um, so it'll be interesting to watch those two American teams try to chase that top American team. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and I, I kind of like the positioning for um, Haven and Brandon right now. They were second at, the, at Skate America a couple years ago. Two years in a row, they've been second. Uh, and then not so much. Lost their national title that they'd won. And now, I don't know, Skate America has been good for them in the past. And they're, you know, skating. They have now had a year under their belt, skating again with John Zimmerman and uh, Sylvia Fontana down in Florida. And so this could be maybe their event to challenge. Okay, so we'll watch for them. Internationally, though, you look at this field. You've got Pang and Jin coming off a fourth-place finish at the World Championships. You also have Pavlyuchenko and Kodakin, who were junior world champs two years ago in 2018. And they've made a slow, steady rise. They were two bronze medals at the Grand Prix last year, made the Grand Prix final. They were fourth at Russian Nationals, so they didn't get to Euros or Worlds. But those are two teams we have to watch out for. Yeah, and I think Pavlyuchenko and Kodakin just like ooze potential. They have, they're very young, but every, every time I've seen them, the progression and the maturity that they have accomplished is crazy. The improvement, you don't usually see that that much every single year. I haven't seen them yet this season. They haven't done any competitions yet. I can't wait to watch them and see what they bring this year. Um, every, you know, he, when a pair guy is young, it takes some time to mature and to get better. I think he has a little bit of room to grow. And once he does, I think that they're going to be pretty darn good. She's tiny. She's teeny, teeny, tiny. <laughs> she is like your typical, like perfect pair girl size. Yeah. Yeah. And, she's and great. She, she's, we were watching her from. Big personality on the ice, even yeah. though she's really tiny. It's very different from Ashley then, yes. right? Yeah. Completely <laughs> different. So it's so fun to be able to, I love that there's not just like this one size that you have to be for pairs. Mm. And I love that they're, be, but yeah. she, that's where we said earlier, she really has broke the mold actually yeah. with, with being a taller girl. Yeah. And I think the new, the judging system, the way it is now, has allowed that as well. I think there's, you know, much more room to, to, to get points on different things that you are good at, not just the typical stuff. 
what version of Pang and Chen do you think? She's got maybe a little foot injury coming into this competition. Well, They've looked I good mean, in practice. We are in Vegas, and it's going to be a <laughs> roll of the dice. We're going to gamble on them. They're gamblers. They like Every time I watch them, it either looks like she's never missed a jump, or it looks like she's never landed one triple in her life. <laughs> I have no idea what she's going to do. Um, you know, sh there, she, even with her old partner, they would be fourth one year at Worlds, and then 12th, and then fifth and then eighth and they're just like all over the place and just the same with this partner it really just depends on the day whether or not they can hold it together when they do do things well they're beautiful they're typical Chinese pair team beautiful throws huge twist they're just kind of like they're kind of there they do everything well mm. but are they memorable I don't think so. Well, let's see if they can create some memories this afternoon. Yes. Let's go ahead and, if we can, we're going to take a look at the start order one more time. And I'm wondering, from your expert opinion, do any of those top three teams, do they not finish in the top three after the short program? I don't think so, but... Any, any guesses as to one, two, you're, three? Are you going to make me sure, make predictions? Come on, Brooke. We're back. It, uh, we're predicting short or long short. overall? Just short. Short. I'm going to go Pavlyuchenko, Kodakin, one, in that order, right there. There it is. You're one, two, three. Yes. After the short program. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone want to disagree with that? You mean the, the bottom three After the short, is what I you don't mean. think not that's... One, not the... Not no, the no, no, the bottom, yeah. the yeah. bottom three. Pain. I don't think that's what it's going to be overall. But for okay. short, that's for what sure. I think it's going to be. And also, shout out to Zoe Jones, who's what, 30, 39 years young? Yeah, I did um, Junior Worlds the same year as Zoe. Um, we both competed for Great Britain, and that was, in, I think, 1995. So wow. she's doing she amazing. She also has three to kids. Here. Wow. <laughs> Maybe I should, like, get out get there. Get out there. there. Time, you know? So you're saying I have a chance. You've got a chance. <laughs> I mean, listen, we're going to get to it, but Michael Weiss died. Uh, Daisuke Takahashi announced his Ice Dance comeback. Do you want to, I mean, we were going to wait for this. Do you want to make your announcement? That is awesome. I love that. The fact that Daisuke is now transferring into the Ice Dance world, how awesome is that? And I'm going to follow him. It's going to be you and I. You, we're going to have a dance team. <laughs> I think it's cool. I mean, he, it's awesome. I, I'm excited. I don't know. I, I, I am anxious to see how well he I am well too, and then I'll, I'll tell you which one of <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the Ice Dance schedule for today. We're just getting ready for the pairs, of course, later this afternoon. We have the men, and then uh, we're going to be with you all day. These are local times. It's 12.40 or nearing 1 o'clock now here locally. We just have the pairs about to get onto the ice, and then we're going to be back with you before the men, after the men, and then this evening you've got the with the ice dance. We're going to put Shanae Care on the hot seat then, and then the ladies tonight. Make sure you use that hashtag ice desk answers so you can get the answers from all of us right here. And a reminder to you watching online, NBC Sports Gold. They've got their figure skating pass all season long. We all use it at home. And if you don't use it at home already, guess what? It's free this weekend. So go to NBCSports.com slash gold slash figure skating, and you can watch all of Skate America for free, guys. It's a pretty good deal. All right. It's a great deal. <laughs> all right. That is our first ice desk here. We're right back with you after the Pairs Short Program from Skate America presented by American Cruise Lines. And, well... Let's roll the dice out on the ice and see oh, how the pairs do. Great. Here Vegas. we go. Vegas, baby. Woo! <laughs>